this is Indeed Stories Untold, your show about ordinary people who do extraordinary things. That's why today we are in Osmond to report on positive and uplifting news of this community. My name is Bulem Molebazi. If service is the rent we pay here on earth, then the Bosmont Community Patrol definitely occupy prime real estate in their community. Known as the BCP, they comprise of a group of volunteers who don't get paid not because the work they do is worthless, but because it's priceless. My name is Farid Domingo, and I've been a resident in Bosmont for over 50 years. My roots are here, I love the area, and I'm an established small business person with family values. I am the chairperson of Bosman Community Patrol, BCP, a privileged role that I have to be able to serve our good community. Bosman was a very, very homely area. It was an area where various people from other areas, as the Group Areas Act came in, where people were moved. But the community was a strong force uh, mainly of Muslim and Christians, but, but there was a strong homeliness and a strong respect for every religion within, within, the, within the parameter. So we, we've got people have got a strong sense of doing right and a strong sense of respect. So it, 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 it did become a, a, a beauty. It's a beauty area to live in, even considering that it, that it is a previously disadvantaged area. Bosman Community Patrol started off as a patrol because we had a huge uh, increase in crime in the area around about eight years ago. We had a series of house breakings during the day and sometimes up to seven hijackings in one night. Given our proximity to the N1 highway, the closeness to the highway to various townships, it made our area an easy target. When a kid can't walk down to the shop, when somebody pulls into the yard in the middle of the night and somebody comes to, to hold them up with a gun, they, they becomes a need. Uh, South African police services are thin spread and also we never had a great service within the area. So we said we had to do something. We could either sit down and be a victim or you could stand up and be heard. And our choice was to stand up and be heard. In every way we were neutral except against and I'm saying it's an oppressor because crime is an oppression. We said we need to take this matter in our own hands. And I'm going on patrol tonight, who's coming with me? And I remember that four people said, yes, I'll come, two of which came. I had an 18-year-old boy and a 65-year-old man that went on the first patrols for the first few days. This happened where we actually patrolled every night. There was an immediate drop. Just having a, at the time we had a tow truck light, the orange light on, on a vehicle, immediately there was a, a noted drop in the crime just based on visibility. You know, you, you know, we had stats where there were up to 95 incidents in a week. We probably have six to eight incidents in a week now. We want that to be on a zero. The spirit of tackling and stamping out the terror of crime in Bosmond became contagious. What started out with just three people evolved into a world of greatness. We started with five teams and we had about 35 members. Each team had approximately three to four shifts a week where you had to do a three hour shift over the whole period. This became very, very difficult because a team would, that would go on on a Monday morning at three o'clock, the same team would go on on a Wednesday evening again and this would happen twice over the weekend but slowly we managed to get more members and we eventually grew to seven teams which then made uh, re reduce the patrolling time to twice a week. BCP had an urgent mandate to keep its community safe from crime but their patrolling had to be done within the confines of the law and Farid explains this. To get legal, the first thing we did was starting by doing vetting, by doing our, our fingerprints and doing that thing, that we were within the law. So there were many challenges like that. For, uh, I'll give you one argument that we use strobe lights. We use a white strobe light. 
and initially this was a big no-no and everybody said no you can't use it and it's uh, you know it's for this and it's for that and and it's illegal for you to use it we then put a delegation together and we went up to Safari Town Police Station and met up with the Brigadier there and we explained the situation why we had to have a strobe light and they said yes but it's illegal so I said but how do we identify ourselves as you identify yourselves with the blue light and we believe that as long as we didn't do the blue light and we stick stuck to a white light we were le we were legal and they said yes it's not legal but we were then given permission to use the strobe light other permissions came afterwards I have to admit that many of the things we did it before we got permission so so it and we weren't apologetic about it uh, one thing for sure we we made sure that there was never a vigilante system. That, you know, that, that is, the, crux, and that is the, the beginning to an end of any good organization where you go out and beat people up for no good reason. So we made sure that we, we followed there. And after when people saw what we did, permissions when we needed to get an official permission, it became easy. We, if we called in, there was one day there was a, a trial for the Tulsi boys, which were local boys here. And we said we wanted to have a protest at the court and we went there and I said I am the, how, the the question was how would you control people I said I'm the chairperson of VCP and we have done this type of thing and we've done it before and without further ado we were given permission in a second so based on the fact that we did things by, on our own and later asked permission it worked for us BCP reclaimed their community from the clutches of crime and many other social ills through active citizenry, but with communities so large, Farid explains how they managed to reach and communicate with everyone. We have WhatsApp forums where we have everybody in the community on the WhatsApp. So anybody having a problem, they put it on the WhatsApp, there will be a patroller on the thing that, that then takes the message onto the patrol chat. We've got a full radio system where we have our own radio channel, a safe radio channel. We have a, a, a base station, radios in, in, the, in our three cars, and handheld radios. The excellence demonstrated in how BCP services its community is achieved not just through sheer passion, but in proper planning and professional training. We have a basic training course. We have a booklet that uh, on a day which is mandatory for every new patroller to go through. We have a booklet where we go through all the, 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 the situations that ha happen. We have a, a trained uh, security officer with us. We have certain people, with individuals within SAPS that also help us with training. We've had a uh, flow motion, uh, it's a group in Florida that, that assists us with uh, basic CPR courses. So there's various training that we do, but it, it, the most important thing, and our first factor, is to keep the patrollers safe. Welcome back to the show. Service is the voice of the people put into action. And these actions mold and shape our present into the future that we can all be proud of. The BCP embodies this idea. They are creating the future that the Bosmont community can be proud of. We had the opportunity to spend the day with BCP volunteers, Fahim and his partner, Ken, to see their actual work on the field. Mr. Lockenberg, how's the health today? Well, thank you, man. We just come to do a routine checkup to see how you're doing, how's the health and everything. I'll tell you again. I see the guys from DCP is here, man. Okay, so just, just following up um, with your, your monthly medication, are you still okay with that? I'm still okay with that, yeah. Okay, 100%. And, and do you have any medical scripts for us, sir? Yeah, I got the one that uh, the one that you gave me, uh, the one that came back. Yeah, but I try, I could try, I could turn up all the other ones. There was two other ones, but these are old, you know. They, okay, no, I'm I, 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 I Any medication? Is the medication still fine? Do you short any medication or anything, sir? As I say, we don't. I all, the only thing I need is uh, inhaling. You know that comes in the box. 
Okay, no other problem. What I can do for you, sir, um, we can we can go back to the hospital, to the pharmacy, and inquire it. I'll just need him to, like, we go into the pharmacy, they punch it in a computer, then you can see what all needs to be handed to you. And then on that day as well, then they'll give you all our medication. Me being an elderly person, I, I they came to, to my rescue. I needed my scripts to be collected. I don't, I don't, unfortunately I don't have transport, but PCPC is there for me whenever I need it. PCP is committed to ensuring that COVID-19, which has affected communities, stays under wrap. Like many other communities, Bosmond has been significantly affected by COVID and PCP is committed to ensuring that they keep their community safe. So while patrolling, Ken and Fahim made sure that their community members adhered to COVID-19 safety regulations. Hey guys. Good, 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 man. Where's good your mask, brother? Where's your mask? We, we, we just, we're just in the community, in and around, yeah, just trying to... Brother trying to enforce some, some regulations, you know, making everything good. But are you okay today, guys? Yeah. Are you okay? Just be safe around here. Some, you know, uh, there's some of these torches around here. So we're just trying to make sure everybody's safe. Wear your mask and stay safe, guys, okay? Yeah, let me give you some sanitizers, guys. Try no, to, try no prevent uh, COVID-19 from spreading. Yeah. So we're just out giving some sanitizers, you know. Okay. People must wear their mask and everything. So be safe, guys. Stay protected. Yeah, okay. Thanks, guys. 100%. Hello. Hey, guys. What about your mask? Please, you gotta wear it, man. Are you okay? You okay? All right, man. Good stuff. No entry unless they have their yeah, mask no on. Entry this. Okay. No entry. All right. Outside. All right. Them. All right. Where's your sanitizer? Do you have sanitizer before the customers come in? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Use it. Thank you, guys. Okay. Besides fighting crime, BCP volunteers also look into electrical theft, which is another big problem in Bosmond. So Ken and Fahim made a quick stop at a cell phone tower to inspect that all is well. The BCP volunteers have a genuine love and passion for people. Good day to you, sir. How are you? Uh, just checking to see the checking the neighbourhoods, making sure that everybody's all right. All right, thank you, and you have an awesome day. Although the BCP does great work in the community, their work does place them in jeopardy and in the line of fire. However, they persevere. We had issues within what we what they what's termed as a lolly lounge within the area. So this was something that we had to stamp out very early. We approached South African police services and we were told that we couldn't go in, we didn't, have a, we didn't have a right to go in, we didn't have a right to challenge them. Now a lolly lounge is a place where drugs are sold, they have young girls basically prostituting themselves for the next fix. And this was very prevalent in the area. And not getting permission and not uh, being able to do anything, our decision was we park in front of the lolly lounge. So thus disturbing customers coming and it, it actually upset the process. And in that, pro in that as a result of that, uh, myself and one or two other uh, senior members within BCP uh, did get death threats. Uh, this was quickly put to bed via our contacts within uh, uh, the the South African police uh, unit, the Flying Squad, where we had close friends, close and good friends who, who serviced us. We've had two cases where, where patrollers were stabbed. Uh, very seriously, one where it nearly hit a, a, a patroller's jugular vein. So there has been mishaps. There has been difficulties. But we have overcome because of the consistency. The key here, and I always say, our key is consistency. When nobody else goes out, we go out. The positive has always outweighed that. Um, there are people who sell drugs, who don't like us. They, it goes with the territory. We, we're not here to be light, we're here to serve our people. Uh, and 
and I always state the fact that we are consistent, the fact that we don't stop for Christmas Day, for Eid Day, for Easter, every day, every week goes on. Yes, it is, it's a high impact on our patrollers' personal time, but people have learned to deal with it over the period. Uh, some of the teams also make a social thing. They enjoy being together at that particular time. The community in large believes in the work of the BCP, and BCP work is funded and supported by them. Once a month we have a collection drive where we stand on the street corners and we ask for money. We have a fuel bill that runs around 10 to 12,000 rand a month, which the local Shell service station gives us 2,000 rand towards our fuel and we, we fill up there. So people give, other people give donations through uh, our banking account, which, which does fund us. But our month-to-month -month expenses are met by the community. People give a donation. There's no force to a donation. You know, there's some people that will come with a two rand and a five rand, and we said, that makes a difference. The only sad part that we get a lot of the pensioners wanting to give, and we, we drew a line, we said, we cannot take money from a government pensioner because they get so little, but the appreciation runs so high that they always insist on, on, on helping us. With the BCP uh, being online, uh, they attend to everything because they cannot judge whether a call is serious or whether it's just somebody playing the fool. So I must be honest, their response is really good and, and, and it keeps the crime to a minimum in our community because they know that the minute you do something wrong, the people are going to phone. Whether it's the person themselves you are costing or whether it is the neighbor, somebody's going to phone and BCP will react. I remember I had uh, somebody coming to my house at night jumping over the wall and it became worrisome because uh, this person was being a nuisance. And I phoned BCP and they came and they assisted me and they took this person away. They took the person to the police station. Welcome back to Stories Untold. Thank you for staying with us. Communities such as Bosmond face many social ills such as drugs, crime, poverty, the list goes on. And now with the lockdown due to the pandemic, these issues have been exacerbated. But the Bosmond Community Patrol shows us that when ordinary people go beyond the call of duties, they definitely can make a significance. Let's have a look. BCP is an organization that goes above the call of duty, which means that they will always serve the needs that exist in their community. Even during COVID-19 and under strict lockdown restrictions, they continued to do even more and they displayed the spirit of unity and compassion within the community of Bosmond in coming together and banding together. In the beginning of the lockdown, uh, Minister Becky Sele said we can't patrol. And we had a meeting and I said, we will patrol. And I said, even if I go out every day and I go alone, I, the patrol will go on. And when I turned, I had 35 patrollers with me. And they said, we will patrol. There was an issue, people came up and they said it's illegal. We said, we will. We went up to the station. If you have a vehicle here every 45 minutes, then we'll stand down. We patrolled right through the, the, the lockdown period where every other CPF countrywide stopped. We never stopped. We went on. We then realized that so many people earn daily wages, a daily, make a daily income or a weekly income that have no income now, people that don't work from home. And we decided that we're going to try and help people. We're going to get the community to help the community. So we got together and, well, we didn't get together, we said, I had my car's boot and I said, we're going to get whoever's got anything to give, drop it. And whoever needs, we'll take it to you. Initially, we started an idea of feed somebody for a day. So whoever had, gave. Whoever needed, took. But then it evolved. Then we had people coming, I want to help you. And we had people coming in with 12 uh, tons of baked beans, with 12 tons of fish with a, a shrink wrap of millimil. We then started making a parcel. And we started a, a parcel that lasted food for two days. So every second day, we would go out and deliver parcels to whoever needed. 
So there was no queuing. We didn't allow queuing. We said whoever needs it, or if your neighbor do, does it, and they're not on WhatsApp, we will deliver food. And this is what happened. Our area never went hungry. Some of the businesses here who gave money, who refused to be named. And that is the spirit of this community. There were local shopkeepers here. Went out of their way and started. And we had a system where we went to a cash and carry, we bought food, and we delivered every day. That, because now everybody heard what's happening in Boswan. We then encouraged our neighbors, Florida, they started helping people as well. We delivered over 3,500 parcels in the seven weeks, in the first seven weeks of the lockdown. Then came the issue with pensions. Our people had to get their pensions on pension day, so they had to go there. They had to get whatever they needed. South African Police Service called us and asked if we could monitor at shopping centers. We sent some patrollers to monitor. And when we, once we sent patrollers, we said, this is crap, we're not going to have our pensioners standing in these long queues. We then went to a shop and we said, pensioners queues is going to happen. We, we will dedicate four patrollers that will assist in that queue, giving our people things. We then collected our pensioners, which we still do, transported them to the shopping center. They could do their shopping or they can do their shopping or draw their pension and they would be brought home with their groceries and they would be taken and fetched from the, from the venue. This has got no scope on a community patrol, but it has got a thing in a community forum. Bosman Community Patrol volunteers are an extraordinary group of selfless people who are sacrificing so much for their community. They tell us what motivates them. My greatest desire and passion is to serve a community. Uh, it's greater to serve than to be served. And that's my motto, that's what I run by. I joined BCP because I saw it as an opportunity to help people and I do have a passion for helping people in any way possible and yeah, I love doing what I do and it's been a joy helping the community. I'm Claudine and the reason why I joined BCP is because I, w I like to help the community and also to show my kids as well that they can do better. They can as well help the community and go forward. My name is Ken Momplay. I've recently joined BCP, I think it's about just over a year, and I was uh, blown away by what these gentlemen have been doing in the community, and because of that, it's sort of they've raked me in, and I've never looked back. I love, I'm passionate about what I do. It's all about serving the community. Another social ill that COVID exacerbated was gender-based violence. BCP again lent a helping hand to help tackle this issue. We have to help people with domestic violence. Many people say that you move away from it, and we said no. The only issue that we said we will not take aside, we will not move in there and say to the husband you're wrong or to say to the wife you're wrong. Or we go in there and we try and resolve the issue and calm the situation down. When there's drug abuse, we've got the local uh, drug there's a group, a local drug book. I pick up the phone, I phone them and I say, here's the situation, can you help? They then step in to help. We have another group also that helps with charity. So we, we basically bend on, uh, pivot on each other, if you can call it that. As BCP, we've made huge differences over the last seven years. I want more. People would say that it's, it's a stupid vision and it's, it's unreal. But I believe that we can evolve. And I believe that We've got the old guard, and we need to refresh with, with, with a younger lot of people coming in. We've achieved so much, but there is so much more that we can achieve. We can go to the stage where we come to a certain degree independent. We use every other facility we can. But we want to reach the stage where not only we doing good, but if we're doing X amount of good, we want an uh, area in El Dorado Park or in Melville or somewhere. Those guys are doing that, let's better them. We want other people to do what we do and do more. 
As communities, we have the ability and responsibility to make a change. The BCP, which comprises of ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things, showed us today that we all can champion our own change. We hope that this story will inspire other communities to change and take charge of their destiny. From myself, Pule Molebati, and the rest of the team, goodbye.